very sadly struggled to be here. We live new lives now. Create new things for us. Make new people for us. The one major thing that the vast them already to us. People of God, if you have been asking God to give you this, to give you that, when you begin to thank Him for what He has done for you already in days gone by, and will you be kind enough to ask God to create new things for you? Call them by name, don't be ashamed, because these are things that you need. Tell God to create, to buy, or to build for you. Begin to pray. Let's all of us pray together, please. Let us all pray together, because there is power when the heavenly and the earth hear our voices together. That's why we pray together. Can we pray together, please? And we pray together as a family. Everybody, please pray and say to God, create new things for me. Tell him to buy it for you or build it for you or make people give it to you. going to lay my hand on the on the mails you received today. I have read them, I've prayed over them. Now I'm going to do it in front of everybody to be a witness to the fact that Jesus is Lord and has answered these prayers. People have written in about the one major issue that they want God to solve before the end of the year. Dear Father, ah, burn with fire. Every obstacle that stands between these, your precious sons and daughters, and the things that they desperately need so that they can focus on you. Oh, Lord, thank you for performing signs and wonders so that their neighbors and their families will know they are serving you the living God. Oh, how we love the way you do your business. Be exalted tonight. Be exalted tonight. Thank you for answering the prayers tonight. Thank you for giving them the one major thing that they need. 
in Jesus' name. Lord, thank you for creating it for them, for making it for them. In Jesus' name, we stretch forth our hand and we receive it. And we keep it and we protect it forever and ever. Amen. you know that that portion of scripture where Jesus says that if you ask him for anything if you ask anything in his name he will give it to you do you know that it also means if you ask him for anything and it is not there in heaven do you know that that portion also means that he will make it for you. He will create, he will create, he will make one for you. Do you know that's the meaning of it? God specializes in creating stuff. He began to share with me that he creates before he creates. So we jump into the giving instead of asking him to create. See, I'm always bringing you new revelation. The reason why we don't receive is we did not ask God to make one for us and then bring it to us. Let's go back to what we were talking about Eve, the wife of Adam, the man from the soil. God first created a woman for him and then brought the woman to him. See? God wants us to ask him to make things for us. See, today I change the way I pray about housing. I change the way I pray about people. Right from yesterday, things began to change. Because Kenneth Hagin says that Christianity is very progressive. Revelation is progressive. God will meet you where you are. When you are ready, he takes you to the next level. If you want to get out of any sort of problem you are, ask God to create, for example, ask God to create a new environment for you. Ask God to create a new atmosphere for you. Ask God to create children for you. Ask God to create a husband, a wife, a business. Let him make one for you. Because it's possible that the one that other people have made will not fit your test. I was asking one of my faithful partners, the kind of house that she wanted. And she told me that the ones that she has seen do not fit up to her standard. Ask God to make one for you, to create a house for you. I told Collins today to change the way he prays. Ask God to create a job for you. And he will create a job for you. The thing that asked Jesus to create a baby and put in your womb and not just give you a baby, create one for me or two. There are some of you in Canada who need children. Ask God to create. Of course, some of you have already seen a dream of me bringing you children. need money, ask God to create them for you. God is able to print money. Where do you think that money arrived from? When suddenly money appears in your room. Many of you from tonight, I am serious, my hand is up. You will begin to see fresh 
paper currency in the currency of the nation where you live, in your, in your home, where you live, in your car, in your office, fresh from heaven. Whether God print them in heaven or he print them on earth is none of my business. The point is, print them. Produce it, create it, make it. Many of you begin to see that. Because you've asked him to make it for you. So whether he's going to ask people to send them to you, or whether he's going to ask angels to, to go to a bank and bring it, without the bank money shortening, the exact amount of money still in the bank, but the angel took some of it and bring them to you. <laughs> if the bank had $40 billion in their, in their safe, and the angel goes there and take the same $40 billion, brought it to you, and then there's still $40 billion there, I have no idea how they do it. But what I know is let them make money for you. Let them create money for you. After all, Satan has been making it for his people. So what stopped God from making it for us? Why do you think it's impossible for God if magicians are producing money from, from people's fear and heart and, and, and from nowhere money appears? So what do you think? Who among you have ever seen a, a magician Make money appear. Please talk. If you've ever seen it. Nobody. Who among you have ever seen a magician make something appear that wasn't a trick? Anybody? Anybody who can share? angel. Okay, that is real magic. That is real magic. Mine is, I've not seen it on TV. I've seen it physically. So when I talk about these things, you better believe me, please. Because I've seen them physically. I've seen money appear physically. On both sides. On God's side and on Satan's side, I've seen them all. I've seen Satan make somebody that was paralyzed through satanic means, the person who walked. And then started having a different kind of problem. And I've seen people rise up from wheelchair and walk on God's side. I dedicate tonight to the Holy Spirit because there is something happening in the spiritual realm. God has changed the way I pray. Creation did not stop in Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2. It's still an ongoing event. Until you begin to ask God to create for you, you will beg till the day you die. Kumela, be kind enough to ask Jesus to create a new car, the kind of car you want. The same thing, Geneva, God is going to give you an SUV. You better believe it. There is somebody that the person behind you is asking for a Pathfinder, a BMW, and I may say this, three quality cars. There's somebody who is asking for a Sebring. Somebody is asking for a Yukon. Somebody is asking for another Mercedes. I can tell what is happening in the minds of everyone on the conference line. There's somebody who just said, oh, I just need a common force so that I can afford it. Ask God to make a car for you. And then, be, and then tell him what kind that you will like, that you've seen already. 
and then you will see what he will do about it. Somebody is asking God for a Lincoln, the new kind of Lincoln. Another person is asking for a new kind of Mercury Grand Marquis. Another person is asking for a Ford Fusion. Another person is asking, there is somebody who tenaciously is asking God for a Rolls Royce. Somebody. There is somebody who is asking God for limousines up to 10 for business. To, to be carrying people, party, wedding, baptism, funeral, all kind of stuff. There is somebody. And I think I know who he is. I feel I know him. somebody in Toronto that needs to begin to tell God to create a business for you. Create a somebody who wants a new image. Jillian needs to ask God to create for her her own permanent store. That nobody will come to cheat you, girl. You are my daughter forever. like I have seen the kind of house Barbara is going to live in. People will be so envious of my prayer coordinator. So envious of this woman. Because she's been asking for God to create a better quality house for her. And to create jobs, different kind of jobs. This woman is busy praying. Unless you think that there is no bread and butter in, in Japan, you're kidding me. God is going to create, not that he's going, he has started to create bread and butter for you in Japan. And those who think there was nothing in Japan will see that God is great. That Jesus is alive and he is a creator. The reason why you shouldn't be afraid. Because with God, nothing is impossible. Luke 137. You are dealing with the highest force. The one who dominates everything. The one who owns everything. The one whose love endures forever. People of God, let me tell you why I'm saying what I'm saying tonight. I've never seen anyone who came to God. And God disappointed that person. There is no disappointment in Jesus. There is no disappointment in Jesus. Everybody say it. There is no disappointment in Jesus. Say it three times, please. Repeat this word to yourself. Call yourself by name. For example, I, I will say, Ibikai Mary, Jesus Christ can never disappoint you. Can you say that to yourself? If you have said that, I want you to shout hallelujah seven times. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah.
reason why you shouldn't be afraid and shouldn't keep silent when Archangel Gabriel, the one in charge of education, communication, the postal service of heaven, the library of heaven, he was talking to Zechariah. He said, do you know that I stand before God? How dare you are doing this? The same archangel came to uh, Mary. And Mary said, how do you think this will happen? And he said to her, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God will come upon you. Spirit of God must always come upon somebody for the impossible to be broken. The Holy Spirit must come upon you and abide in you and the impossible will be broken. That's what is happening tonight. When once the Holy Spirit come first, the Holy Spirit must come first, then the power will follow. You cannot receive power until the Holy Ghost come. Because when he comes, power comes. Why are you quieted within me, O oh my soul? Why are you afraid within me? Trust in God. You see, we are following, we are disciples of the Most High God. You have no right to fear. Everything else has the right to fear you. Holy Spirit is not a second class God. Holy Spirit is not a third world country. The Holy Spirit is God. He is the one without which life will never emerge. Go and read the Bible. Because it was until the Holy Spirit appeared in Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. Then Jesus began to call things out. How dare you want to pray without the Holy Ghost? How dare you want Jesus to create things for you without the Holy Ghost? Even Jesus while he was in the flesh needed to be possessed by the Holy Ghost. How many magicians and witches and psychics and people who communicate with the dead are doing it on their own? Never. They are doing it with demons. Without their appearance of demons, they cannot do anything. And they come to you to tell you how powerful the human being is. Who tell you? Those guys are not powerful anything. They pay the price. They've sacrificed human beings. They've sacrificed animals. They've given money. Many of you, when you come to me, you give me a hundred dollars. You think that's a lot of money. I appreciate it because it means a lot to me. Because you work hard for it. But let me also tell you that many of you who have paid up to five to ten thousand dollars to witch doctors to help your situation. You were willing to do that. You were willing to send money, 2,000, 3,000 to your people back in wherever you come from to go and look at those things for you. And it didn't solve your problem. Because mine is cheap, mine is easy, because mine is almost free or free, so you think it's, it's cheap. Because in in the Western world, if you do not attach big sum of money to something, people do not think it's valuable. And that's why the preachers of today's world, the pastors and the prophets and apostles, they've learned that trick. You can't see them, except you are somebody who gives them big money. And I'm going there too. Except I have some great support. I'll go there too. So that it will be difficult for people even to get, get me. And 
now be busy selling my books and doing conferences and other things like the rest of them. And if you call, nobody home. If you support me, then I'll stay home. If you don't support me, I'll be out like the rest of them and you don't see me and you suffer and die in your problem because there's nobody to talk to. Who knows revelation and discernment? Pick up your phone and try to call these other people and see whether there will be anybody home. You'll be talking to a son or a secretary. You can attend those people's prayer conferences or prayer line. But for you to talk to them one-on-one -on -one is impossible. Except you donate big money during that time, then they have a prophet or prophetess to come and prophesy for you. And you know all this. Go and give them $200 and see whether there will be a prophet come to prophesy. None. It must start from $500, $1,000 and more. They've learned that trick. People have lured them to do these things. People of God, what I'm saying tonight is this. You have no right to continue to live in fear. You have no right to continue to be afraid of wicked people in your family. You have no right to continue to be afraid of your boss or other staff is at your job. You have no right to be afraid of your husband or your wife. You have no right to keep to be afraid of government, police officers, to be afraid of, of different things that you've been afraid of. And those things are not after you anywhere. Some are afraid of tax, the tax people. Some are afraid of immigration people. Some are afraid of sickness. Some are afraid of poverty. Seriously? Some are afraid of dying. Some are afraid of when they sleep, somebody will come after them so they cannot even sleep. Really? Let me tell you something. It's about time tonight that you know that the secret to your victory is the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost needs to come upon you in power and in fullness and not just in talk. Talk is cheap and enough of talk. You've been to churches, they preach and talk. Heaven and earth, no power. And people go back with disease, go back with problems. There is no week that miracle is not happening in my ministry. There is no two days that I do not receive a testimony of miracle. Have I capitalized on those testimonies to make money? No. For some people, one thing happens. They talk about it. Their families have money to broadcast it. To buy them radio and A times and television times because they know it's business. I want something genuine for you. And the Holy Ghost did come upon Mary. And when the Holy Ghost come upon her, power entered. The power of God came over her. That is the meaning of overshadow. And God used his hand. Now this is the reason why God is giving me the revelation of creating. My job is to create into your life. And not just to ask God to give you. I have been given the authority of performing signs and wonders to create. Maya, you better tell my son that it's about time that that cathedral be taken up from his manhood. Next few days, everything that blocks his ability to urinate properly going to scatter. Because I scatter them in the name of Jesus. He's not going to need no kidney transplant. He's not going to need no surgery. He's not going to need no new kidneys. The reason is because whatever blocked that place, I am blocking. Because that thing has no right to block him from doing anything. It's not going to happen. It's about time that we begin to enforce the power that we got. Because until you begin to give command and pronouncement and enforce power, the Holy Ghost doesn't work. He will just be looking at you, waiting to work with you. Angels, the same thing. Some of them have been following you. 
their wings is getting old. You've not been sending them to do something. So they are just there following you. This is the true story I'm about to tell you. I was coming back from the West Coast to Wichita two or three weeks ago. And there was a bad storm. A very bad storm in the air. I said, really? Hey! Some you are in trouble with me. Do you know I am in this plane? So I ordered immediately. I didn't pray. I don't have no time for that. <laughs> I said to the angels, the two angels that followed me, get out of the plane and speak with all humility to them. They are seven like myself. I said, get out of the plane, please, sir. And go and stand on both sides of the plane, one on the left hand, one on the right hand, and command the wind. Immediately I said it, it was like one second. I saw the angels left the plane. And they stood one on the right side of the plane, one on the left side of the plane, and the storm stopped immediately. Instantly. Until when we reached Wichita and the angels came down and walked with me home. Stay there. Keep getting afraid of witchcraft. No witches have ever passed my roof to go and do their wicked. They cannot pass through here. They go through a different route. You pass through where I am, my goodness. Both you and the broomstick you are flying with will fall down. You will come down to the ground. And you have to come to report to me. Because I have to give you license for you to pass through my territory. It's like a plane of a different country. It's like an aircraft of a different country. Passing through your own country. You have to shoot it down. If they refuse to stop. And come down. You have to shoot them down. So they know better. Because they know, they know that they are not going to stop. So they don't even come near here. I can't tell you when last that I had a nightmare. Really? Nightmare? I am the nightmare to them. They are not the nightmare to me. <laughs> you want war? I'll go. I'll bring the war. <laughs> you should be the nightmare to your enemies and to wicked people. You should be that they should see you with a big sword pursuing them in their sleep. And when they wake up in the morning, they say, Hey, there's something about this person, no? I better, I better, I better honor this person. They shouldn't be the one coming to give you nightmares. You should be the one giving them very wicked and dreadful. Like that lady in New York that uh, had all these demons come after her. And that night she watched my video before going to bed. And from nowhere I appeared in a white gown with a shining sword. And I was cutting down these demons. And the rest of them fled. And she woke up in the middle of the night and started calling. And the following morning I was able to get her call. I said, what's going on? And she told me the story. Same thing with Beth in Texas, in Dallas, in the Fort Worth area. He came with a big gun in his sleep. He was shooting down the demons. The people, wicked people. And they left him alone. That's how he found me. He didn't know who I was. He'd never seen me. Until he saw me in his dream. You should be the same way. When the Holy Ghost come upon you, you are different. God has to recreate you tonight. 
God has to recreate you tonight. Show me one person in the Bible that did something mighty for God that the Holy Ghost did not come upon him or her. Tonight I want you to have the Holy Ghost. Not to be a silent ghost inside you. Tell him to come. Because you are willing to obey. You are willing to follow. So that fear will depart from you. So that you can walk in victory. The desire of God is for you to walk in success and victory. Mayam. This is what I want you to do tonight. <sighs> During the course of this prayer, we'll recap praying tonight. I want you to take your word to your family. Not afraid to tell it to you the way it is. About you. And let me tell you the truth. The woman who sold you has to be sold. Are you listening to what I'm saying? The woman who sold you has to be sold tonight. And for your husband, it's not a man that sold him. It's one old woman who sold him to. I'm revealing things to you guys tonight. I've been keeping quiet about it. I've been looking at you. Your husband is my son in the Lord. You are my daughter in the Lord. Those of you are very precious to me. Have you asked yourself why? The problem that has been happening has been happening. Somebody sold him. And the old woman, as I'm being told, what I'm telling you is what I'm being told right now. The old woman who sold your husband is already dead. And before she died, she handed him over to an auntie. That's why everything he has tried to do is right. Seems, seems to go and hit his head on a tree. He is walking through a highway. There is no tree. Suddenly a tree will, will come. Or a semi truck will appear and he will boom. Problem. Everywhere his history is a history of problem. Am I lying? Am I telling the truth? There you go. Don't tell me your own history. Your own history has been the same history. It has been the same history. Why do you think that both of you are married? Because the same principality that bought and sold two of you is the same. What run in his family is what running in your family. That's why your own history has been the same one. Next five years, everything goes well with you. You're doing so beautiful. You're well. Can I share something with you tonight? Mayam, can I share something with you tonight? Every seven years, something bad always happens to you. Every seven years, something evil will always happen to you. But that is how the clock works for you. Tonight, both of you are going to be causing a drama. Because the youth sacrifices and the youth charm, they poured blood, they poured alcohol, and they use money. That's why both of you, you are sending me money for exchange. I won't, I won't tell you what that means, for exchange. If money was used, I'm going to ask you for it. If other things was used, so be it.
Let me share with you one more revelation. I am going to Ghana to see it all on behalf of both of you. So listen carefully. And I'm going to ask angels to dig out the coffin that they buried for that man. Did you know that a coffin was buried for him? Did you know that? And that is why he's been constantly sick in the sea where he used to walk. Sick wherever he goes to. Sick, 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 sick. They bury the coffin for him. It's not about prayer. Those things don't listen to prayer. They listen to power. <laughs> they listen to command, pronouncement, dominion. They listen to force. Let's pray this. So tonight, you are going to pray to destroy the coffin, but I will be in Ghana with you. It's about time that you let the entire world know who are the wicked people and the wicked in your family. It's about time that they walk through the streets and talk before they die. Those who want to be saved will run to Jesus. Those who do not want, they are going to pay a great price for it. Just a minute, let me just make sure. Ladies, don't miss your phone because I need to talk to you in public today. Why do you think that all your life, no matter what you try to do, today everything is fine and you celebrate? Three days later, something else will happen. A new problem will begin to know you. Why do you think that cancer is taking out everybody? What is it cancer that runs in your family? Yes. What runs in your family? Arthritis, crippling problems. what has been taking them out. What about when they work so hard and there is no evidence for their toil and their skill and suffering? Did your parents come from the from, from the from the south? Yes, you did. What happened to those lands? I don't want to talk about it, but you think I do not know. What happened to those lands? What about what what about your uncles and your aunts? Father's brothers, your mother's brothers who were conniving with those things. Have you guys ever tried to found the treasure in the family? 
because there are people in your family who live very well. Do you know that? You didn't need to tell me this. There are people in your family on your father's side and on your mother's side who live very well. Nobody knows how they make their money. How did the money come? You think I do not know? You think I do not know? You didn't want to find out? I found out. I didn't need to have an investigator to go investigate where you come from in the city. And there's also, is there a side of the family that is connected with Alabama? wasting time, you are going to tell God to triple everything that was sent, to triple your progress. And everything that was thrown, the fire that was thrown into your family, that destroyed the family unity, you are the one to put it out. There are people who are not talking with each other. Even when even when mommy dies, you are still quarreling up to today. You think I don't know only that you decide not to get yourself involved in the fight. Because you know who you are, because when you involve yourself in it, there will be disaster, you know it. Tonight you are going to remove that fire. Because the same spirit of betrayers and traitors still remain in the family. See? This is what we call the gift. It's not just word of knowledge, but ability to see into the supernatural. I know what's going on. Emel, are you on the phone tonight? very carefully. I want you to ask Jesus to give you a new soul. Because the one he gave you while you were coming, that makes it a pretty good thing. <laughs> they tried to take you out. Thank God when things goes wrong, you know how to come back to God. You know how to come and stay in His presence. If you are going to stay with Him, you better stay with Him. Your life is changing. Don't allow it to slip out of your hand. God has defeated your enemies. Don't let your enemies come back to defeat money you are looking for has been released to you. That's all I'll say to you. Sister, are you on the line tonight? Yeah. How did it go today? Everything went fine. Don't go into detail. Okay, we'll talk about it later, okay? Cool. Now, let me share something with you. You are one of those ladies that have been crying out to God and praying day and night. Christ has come up to her. No miracles are going to happen to you that will not just change your life, but the life of everyone around you. Because 
when people see you, they will not believe that it is them they shall have to And the worst thing will be this. The man who insulted you, betrayed you, manipulated you, many of them will want to come back because they see money. You look like dollar bills, you smell like dollar bills, and of course you have them. So they will want to come back. God is telling you this tonight. Do not allow any of those people back into your life. Because they made you and your children suffer. Are you listening? There you go. So it's confirmation. of God, have you seen it? He and I, we've never discussed any of this. I don't know anything about it. This is what we call real ministry. So when I ask you to release money for me to go and preach on radio, please do. Dr. Anthony Mace is waiting for me to fly down to National Harbor, Maryland, and start recording. I need to have at least between ten to 20,000 in the account for me to go and start. So that wherever you are in the world, you can turn to an internet radio and I'm on. I'm on. Hallelujah. Because people, and people of God, let me tell you the truth. The real time you are going to really see discernment of spirit, where I will be reading people, and I will even talk about people's phone numbers without them without me even knowing who they are. I will talk about the address of where you live. I will describe your bedroom for you. I will tell you who slept with you last night. I will tell you your home phone number and your cell phone or email address. You've not seen anything yet. It's on. And you will even see it more when we get our church off the ground. If you can gather two, three, four people who are faithful in your city, they can begin to meet in your home for a church. Invite me, come in to partner with me. And I will release the name of our church and you can start one in your city. I will come and pray and start one. Wherever you are in the world, if you can put two, three, four, five people together who are faithful, I will come and start a branch of our church with you. And those of you who follows me, you are going to be the pastor there. I'm serious. I want to train you on the, on, the, on the work training. While you are ministering, the training goes on. Because some of you are going to be the prophet, the apostle, the evangelist, the pastors, the teachers for our churches. You're going to earn a lot of money too. God is going to bless you and make you rich. So wherever you are in the world or any city in America, if you can bring your family together, you want to start a church, if you are tired of the church where you go, there is no miracle, there is no power. You're not seeing the Holy Ghost come so that power come. Invite me. I will fly down to your city and establish a church right down there in your living room. Now I ask you, bring your neighbors, let them come. Bring those on wheelchair, let them come. Bring those with cancer, bring those with AIDS. Bring the blind, the dumb, the deaf. Bring people who are poor. And you will see what will happen because those are the, I know me. I have seen it before. It is in those kind of situation, it is in those kind of situation that God comes into action. The guy Mary Ministries, how can I help you? Please join me in the conference. Thank you. Hallelujah. It is in those kind of environment, a crusade environment, a conference environment, a healing crusade environment, Holy Ghost meetings environment, faith, faith mission environment, miracles 
environment, that's when you really see God in action with me. What we are doing here, you are seeing nothing. You are only seeing a few miracles here and there, sporadic. You are going to see things. Like my mom told you to tell my son, when they remove the catheter, there will be no operation, he will be fine. He has to go back to his job. I curse every cancer. How dare cancer? How dare cancer? How dare cancer? There are many of you who are following me today. I'm following Jesus. And you do not know where money is going to come from. It's the same person. It's the same you. You, you, you. You're going to be the one who's going to be writing me a cash. You're going to be smiling and giving me this bubble, this bubble gum smile. Because it's now well with your soul. And I will always remind you where you came from. You came from deep, dark poverty. And now you're wealthy. Invest your money. And also enjoy your money. There's one last thing I want to say tonight. Then we begin to pray. Please, if you are a woman or if you are a man, please be careful about what I'm going to tell you. If there is somebody who has been corresponding with you on email, on Facebook, and other social media, please cut them off. If somebody from a different country, you've never seen the person, but the person calls you on the phone, tell you they love you, tell you they want to do business with you, God is telling me to warn you to cut them off. How many people on the prayer line have such relationship going on? Please. If you don't want to mention your name, just mention your state. Is there somebody on the prayer line or on Ustream? If you're on Ustream, send me an email. If there is a man whom you are relating with emotionally from a different country, you met on Facebook or you met through a, a Christian dating site, God is telling me to tell you to withdraw. The reason is because we are looking for you for profit. You don't stand a chance to gain a dime. You are the bait. Is there anybody on the prayer line? I know you'll be shamed and all. It doesn't matter. Just say, I did not write to me or call me or call my administrator and let us know. Cut them loose. Now let me tell you how the Holy Ghost put it. Cut those talkers. They are hookworm and talkers. And they are coming to you in the name of Jesus. Heaven knows I've told you what I've been told to do. Because soon money is coming your way. And some people have already been planted to take you away from here. And I'm not going to allow that. Bible says in Acts 1 verse 8 and you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. The disciples couldn't do much until the Holy Spirit came and took them and took hold of their minds. Who is Jesus in the Holy Spirit? You are possessed by human talk or human talk and imagination and voices. Others by demons. Others by the influences of fallen angels. Lift up your hand tonight. God has told you so many things tonight. 
lift up your hand and say, any area that God has spoken to you, I'm not going to tell you, pray this prayer with me. I'm not like that. Any God has, you, you, you cannot be listening to me tonight and not say that God has spoken to you. Whatever area God has arrested you, convinced you, or talked to you, let's pray together. Don't worry about somebody's voice higher than your own or lower than your own. Begin to pray tonight. And begin to ask for God's mercy. Begin to tell the Holy Spirit to take possession of you, to possess you, begin to use you, begin to arrange darkness around you, begin to destroy what they buried against you, what they did against you, begin to call on the blessing to begin to run in your life in the place of those things. Begin to pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Create new power, create new ability, create new ability for your people. 
Kukuranda sande ke yando. Makom paten ke kayanto. Mimbeke yashom barato kashanta. Mimbeke yashan tombe kayando. Yando se ke yashaku. Mimbemba soko yimbi kashanto. Merombrato. Mire kandambrati. Hey, Shumburam Bruteka Shanto. Hey, Barantoko Shanto. Mire Teke Yasende Mbako Yande. Kandom Bruti Sende Kayando. Minte Kalasumba. Kantom Britanto Ko Shatende. Karom Bruti Andi Tando Ko Shando. Me Kantom Brati Shatatarambra. He can do both attack with you. Me can dem bride krasum barantumbu. Me kaya sim barantu ko ya shanto. He can dem bra yondo ko ye ye. He marondo ko shadam branto ye se ke ye. Marromboru ke zanturim broti kayando. Me resatum basako yandu biya. Me kore prusako narambraso. Me kende yo mando braso. Nato kayo sendu kayo braso. Mantu kuye sando mbakurando. I am making a new door. A new door, a new door. I have smashed the old one and broke them to pieces. I am making a new door for you. A new door, a new door, a new door. Yea, I am creating new things for you. New cars for you. New airplanes for you. I am creating everything new for you, for you, for you. She teranda kashando, mi te kondambru sanda kayamba. Ne kondo pusi kayante mbaya sandi, ke sonde pasa kayatamba. Mi re konde asiata, mi kondombru se kayando. Ni seke ya ntomba. Ya kakaramba kasharamba rumba. Ni ke ya karamba rasende. Na ro kasharamba koyande. Ni roto komba. Si kayanda basaka yambu. Ni ritaka shintambara koki kaya. Yey! Ikenyo siambu. Thank you, Jesus, for new doors that you created. Thank you for new money that you printed. Thank you for new elevation that you brought into my life and the life of your people. Yes, Orando, Koyende Sekayo, Marumbo Sekayunde Sekayo, Si koye mokando di koye, ma yonde se si kando di koye, ma ronde se si koye, jambon tan so si koye. Thank you, Jesus, you are Lord. 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 Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Saranda kashando brati sayakaya. Mutambo si te kaya sunde. Mantumbra tasayam takayando. May rentera santo kayambratu. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name forever and ever. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for forgiving your people. Thank you, Lord, for pouring a new sweetness upon us tonight. Thank you for pouring upon us deliciousness. Thank you for turning back the lies and minds of our children back to us. Of our family members back to us. Thank you for doing something that is beyond our imagination. In Jesus' name. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Jesus' name. I have a revelation to share with you all. There is a woman that is on the telephone line tonight. There is somebody who will be coming to you. I'm not sure whether it is connected. I'm not sure, but I am. I have been shown. Somebody is coming to your house, knocking at your door. You are not prepared for this. And uh, you will be given a testimony on this prayer line. The person is coming with new clothing. Like new, I see them with them. They have already taken it to the, to the laundry man. Is that what they call those who will, who will wash your clothes and iron them? What do we call dry those? Cleaner. Dry cleaner. They've already been dry cleaned. A lot of uh, blouse. A lot of blouse and suit and skate. Already in the, um, they put them in those um, white, um, what do we call it? Like when they finish dry cleaning them, then they'll put them inside that white uh, plastic bag. Is it plastic bag or what do they call it? Dry cleaning bag. They have many of those kind of apparel, those kind of outfits. Some of them are gowns, some of them are skirt and blouse, some of them are pants with suits. They've already been dry cleaned. They are bringing them to your door to hand over to you. And this is happening because some years back, you 
gave away things that were costless to somebody else. And God is giving back to you more than a hundred uh, fold of what you have given. Then there is somebody else that somebody is handing over a car to you. It's a four-door car. I don't know whether it's a Ford or it's a GMC, a Chrysler, but it looks like one of it, but I'm only seeing the car from the side. And then I can see part of the back, the trunk, and the front, but very nice. It has been a used car, but it wants this. It's very nice, very luxurious inside. Somebody is giving this car to a, a, one of my partners. You're receiving an early use car, and it's going to solve a lot of problems for you. Because you've been asking for this asking for this. So this is the revelation that I'm seeing tonight. God is creating a car. When things like that happen, God calls it called creating a car. When it has already been made, we call it creating because you create the event. The reason why we call it creating is because we create the event that brings the car. And many of you, God brings us to creating Today, I want to thank some of you who joined me in some of the recordings that I did. The recordings will continue tonight. Um, they continue tonight. I don't know when it will end. Um, some of these things will be shown. Some of the videos will be shown at different locations throughout different areas. All the one part of the world. So there are some of my meditations. Thank you.